And if we were to get a pullback on gold here to basically 1925 to 1900, that would be a really good technical support to buy. So I want to move over to gold because that's what our audience is usually the most interested in. So yep. gold, we see it getting a little bit more comfortable over 2000, which is different than the other times that gold has passed this level. It's kind of in the past gone above 2000 and then gone qu pretty quickly back. So mm -hmm. are the charts telling you that something is different for gold this time? Yeah, so to me, this is this is definitely the real deal, right? And part of it is going historically back to the 1970s. I think we've talked about that before, how how the pattern that we saw from 2018 to 2020, from 2020 to 2022, and now this starting up move is totally almost a replica of what happened in the 1970s, where gold actually, after that consolidation period, started to do a 9x return. It went from about $100 to about $900 an ounce. Now, again, I don't think that we'll do a 9x here on gold at these levels, but at the same time, to me, this is the replication of, of human sentiment and, and what's going to come forward. So I do think that per the charts, and I've been bullish on gold for the last couple of years, is that we should break the all-time highs at around 2075. And I think by year end, you're looking at 2300 at minimum. Um, and I think really 5,000 within a year or two is very, very possible. This should be the new bull market here um, in in asset prices, if you will. And I think it's long overdue. And uh, we should see, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I continue to be very, very bullish on gold. Yeah, you know, we've been talking about gold for a long time. And I remember when we spoke at the end of last year, you said that 2050, 2070 level was where there was resistance. So I wondered if you could talk a little bit more about gold's path forward in 2023 and mm -hmm. just how we could see that unfold. Yeah, so so the way charts dictate, right, is that you have, we have a very clear resistance from the high of 2020 here to the high of 2022 here. All right, so we know that there were investors that were kind of up there buying and up here buying and each time we pull back. So what that's going to do is it's going to trigger when we get back to that level there's going to be some investors that say, hey, listen, every time it's gotten here, it's pulled back. So I'm going to sell into that. And what that does is it ultimately causes a pullback at that level. It's called a triple top in this case. So off of this, the way triple tops usually work, you get a small pullback of those sellers. But the overall macro bullish pattern here, this is when we see if we look at this bigger pattern, it's all sideways. Yes, it kind of came down, then up, then down, then up. But overall, it's a sideways channel. That's a bullish channel. That tells you the macro, the bigger move is going to be a big breakout to the upside. So again, in 2023, I do think we touched the highs here, the triple top. You'll probably get a little bit of a pullback, a few sellers that say, I'll take my profits and run here. But then I expect by end of year to break above this level. Okay, so we have some idea of the upside percent chill for gold in 2023. I do always like to ask you about how low we could go partially because it's something we should know, partially because sure. that's that's an area where people might want to buy. So how does that look like for you? So in terms of buyers, what I've been what I've been saying is to buy the pullbacks, right? So you, you never pay up when, when something's gone on a run for 10 days in a row or something, never pay up because you'll inevitably get a pullback. The question is, where do you buy? And, and basically for that, what we can see is if you take the high from 2022 to this high, there's this down sloping trend line, and then you have this up sloping trend line as well. And what we're seeing is that those two are getting closer and closer to the same level. So for me, that creates a confluence of two major support lines. And if we were to get a pullback on gold here to basically 1925 to 1900, that would be a really good technical support to buy for that next leg up that possibly could see a breakout through the 2075 level. Okay, very useful. And, you know, if we're talking about gold, we have to mention silver as well. So silver has been on the move. We saw it get past 25, even 26. But we are still a long way from $30 per ounce for silver. And I know that's a level that a lot of people are excited to eventually see. So is $30 for silver a possibility in 2023? I do think it is a possibility. I mean, it's definitely the high end of my target. And again, we can see that gold is much closer to that double, triple top than silver is at this point. Part of that reasoning is also if, if we are going into a recession, then the industrial side of silver suffers while the store of safety still helps it. So, so it has something working against it during a potential recessionary situation. Having said that, I still think that by year end, if gold's going to make a move towards 
2300 it makes sense that you could probably double top on silver between 29 and $30. Um, I do think silver eventually breaks out. I think most of commodities, because inflation is going to stay high for a longer period of time, most commodities do do very well. But I think at least for this year, my high-end target would be that double, triple top. All right. And when we talk about gold and silver, I know that people always want to care about the stocks as well. And sure. investors, some investors at least, are still disappointed to not see their gold and silver stock investments moving along with the prices. So what are your thoughts there? Do you see the stocks catching up with the metals? And when might we see that happen? Yeah. So so I think one of the things that most investors had a hard time with in 2022 is that the miners underperformed even gold and silver so dramatically. And, and the reason that happened is because you had inflation that was super high and, and, and ultimately the metal prices weren't keeping up with the inflation, right? So inflation was much higher than what we were getting out of gold and silver in terms of upside. And what that meant is that the input costs for these gold miners were skyrocketing, but they weren't able to sell gold and silver for higher prices at the time, which made their, their, their markets essentially much weaker, their stock price much weaker. That is actually changing now. What we're seeing is inflation is starting to come down while the price of metals is going up. So you actually should see a reversal now where the miners actually outperform dramatically to the upside if I'm correct that the metals do go higher. So I think they will play catch up. And I think, again, a lot of the metals will do really, really well. Again, if I look at GDX here, GDX has had quite the run, so I wouldn't be a buyer just yet. Wait for it to pull back maybe to this pivot high around 33.20. And then that's where you would start to nibble a little bit at that price. I think that gives us a lot of insight into your strategy. You know, you're constantly readjusting. You're looking at yep. the markets every day, of course. I want to ask, you know, where have you seen the most success in your trading so far in 2023 now that we're more than a quarter into the year? Yeah, so for me, the most success has come from short-term trading, right? Where when we get this volatility in the markets, I'm jumping in and then I'm jumping out and then I'm usually getting back in at around the same level. So it's been a trader's market. I think that when you had the Fed intervention with all the money printing, it basically made the markets just go sideways to up for long periods of time. I remember the VIX getting down sub 10 over the last five or so years when the, when the printing was going on, when quantitative easing was going on. And that was very detrimental to people like me who are swing traders, who like the quick moves, the volatility. Now we're back in a volatile market, and that is just gravy for us that want to get in and want to get out. And I can make so much more money than a long-term investor by trading the levels back and forth. And just like you said, it's a matter of I'm a, I'm a trader that's always reanalyzing, right? Every day I'm doing a risk-reward assessment. I'm doing a, a probability assessment. Are we going to bounce here? Are we going to break here? How is that going to play? And then that dictates my daily trades on, on a consistent basis. So to me, it feels like volatility is not going away anytime soon. So it probably will remain a trader's market. But how do you see it for the rest of the year? Yeah, I'm with you. I, I think that the market was kept neutralized, almost like being a drugged patient where the Fed was injecting this money and it was just keeping the markets kind of in zombie mode, grinding higher. You now have a, a patient that's getting off the drugs, right? The Fed stopped printing the money, and now it becomes a much more real-life situation where there's volatility, there's craziness. And as long as the Fed isn't coming back and printing money, you're going to get this more volatile market, which means traders and investors need to be more nimble. You can't just be an investor that, to me, goes to sleep and says, hey, I'll check back in three years, and I hope I did well. That was the old way. The new way is to be more of an active trader. All right. So as we're wrapping up, I want to check in on one of your calls for 2023, which was that gold will outperform both Bitcoin and the S&P this year. This is the same call that you made last year, and it did come true last year. So now that we are about four months into the year, how is that standing for you? Is that still what you're thinking? It is still what I'm thinking. So gold's performed amazingly well. I think it's beating the S&P right now, not obviously Bitcoin this year. Uh, but I do think that Bitcoin could run into some serious issues by before year end. So I'm going to stick with the safe, steady gold trade here. And again, part of it is being a risk adverse in a market where we don't know the outcomes of banking crisis and different things like that. And I think that's the play right now is to be safer and be kind of in the sure bet versus going for the kind of the home run, which could be Bitcoin maybe continuing up. But Bitcoin could also drop 20, 30, 40 percent in a very short amount of time. Okay, so gold is still in. That's always what I like to hear. Do you have any final words that you would leave the audience with as we're wrapping up? 
Yeah, I think just just keep in mind that this is a market where you know the good traders and investors will stand out. Bear markets notoriously show you who can who basically can trade and who can't. In a bull market, everyone looks like a genius. But what I always say to people is is you know take five minutes a day and try to learn one thing about the charts, learn one thing about human psychology, and in a year you will be a totally different investor with so much more insight, making such much better decisions. So again, just a little education on a daily basis makes a big difference.